Okay, what you see here is hydrogen gas being electrically stimulated by a current in a sealed glass tube. So H2 molecules are gaining energy and they are breaking into H atoms. Now the H atoms ha are gaining energy and the electron in the hydrogen atom is being elevated to higher energy levels after absorbing certain quanta or packages of energy. When those electrons have the ability to drop back down to lower levels or their original level, they emit certain packages of energy. There's mercury. That's a pretty blue, don't you think? There's neon. Now don't you think that that is impressive? So Bohr, he looks at that emission spectrum for hydrogen and he looks through something like this, a spectrometer. He breaks it down, that light, into prism uh, by prism and prismatically he sees that there are four distinct color bands only that are coming off of that hydrogen and so his postulation was that electrons are actually going from high energy levels to lower ones and releasing certain packages of energy that translate into wavelengths in the visible spectrum and only four other EMR, like gamma rays and X-rays, were coming off of that machine too, which is why I was standing kind of far back from it, you know what I mean? So, Bohr says, okay, but visibly there are six transitions that we can see. See, the model of the atom had developed up to a certain point where Bohr understood that electrons were outside of a nucleus that had protons in it, somewhere maybe in the middle of the atom. That was developed by Rutherford, and before that, J.J. Thompson, and then before that, John Dalton. Okay, so now Bohr is saying, you know, we know where the protons are, they're in the nucleus, but what are the electrons doing, and where are they? Here's where I think they are. I think they're found at distinct levels outside the nucleus. We're going to call those energy levels. And here's what he's able to figure out. If we've got one proton in the nucleus here, and we've got one electron on the first energy level, abbreviated by n equals 1. If we want to take that electron and excite it by giving it a shock, just like we saw in the emission spectrum apparatus, then that electron could go from n equals 1 to n equals 2. But it has to absorb a certain package of energy, or quanta, in order to do that. See, this electron can absorb half of that package and go up to n equals 1 and a half. There's no such thing all of the energy levels go up in whole numbers and you can't have n equals zero, it's not possible. So the electrons at n equals one, if it wants to go to n equals two, you gotta add a certain quanta of energy. How much? Here's how he did the calculation. He said the energy was going to equal, look at the number, negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times z squared, z is just the number of protons in the nucleus called the nuclear charge, so it's easy, for hydrogen it's always one. 1 squared over n squared. And so if you want to know how much energy is at this level, plug in n, which is 1, 1 in here, and then of course the answer is going to be negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18. It's a negative quantity of energy. Sounds kind of confusing, but it really works nicely when you want to calculate how much energy is involved in the electron going from n equals 1 to n equals 3. What you can do is, you just say, oh, okay, the, it's the difference between z squared and n squared of final, where it ends up, to z squared over n squared initial, where it came from. And if you do that calculation right there, that will give you the amount of energy it takes to make the electron go from n equals 1 to n equals 3, where n squared final here is going to be 3 squared, which is going to be 9, so it's going to be 1 ninth minus 1. Notice that that's going to give you a negative number. Negative times negative equals positive because it requires energy to go from n equals 1 to n equals 3. But in the reverse, if you want to go, the electron wanted to go from n equals 3 to n equals 1, then you would put the 1 here, the 3 here, now it's going to be positive, now the number's negative, which means energy is released. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, by the way, those four transitions that you saw were electrons going in that hydrogen, going from 
n equals 6, 5, 4, and 3, each of those down to n equals 2. And those were the only four in the visible light spectrum that you could actually see hydrogen releasing. Bohr's formula works wonderfully, but only for hydrogen. It actually is not going to be able to work out for any other element other than hydrogen. Bohr also thought that, you see, if the electrons are on distinct energy levels, well, I guess what they're doing is they're on certain levels and they're orbiting the nucleus like the planets do around the sun. It's too bad because that's not actually what they're doing. What they're doing is something crazier than that, and we'll talk about that in a second. But you know, just to disrespect Niels Bohr and say, oh, his calculation only works for hydrogen. Ah, he thought the electrons traveled in orbits. Ah, he was no good. He's a genius. He's one of those wonderful geniuses of the early 20th century that we owe a lot to in terms of chemistry. Don't be disembored.